This is the example level layout with two floors that I will make as a demonstration in this video, and here's the blocked out result. Here's another larger scale example with three floors and the unfinished block out result. The approach we'll be using today will make heavy use of grid maps and aims to contain pretty much every element of the process in the Godot editor itself. There are many other good external tools for creating 3D levels, like Blender or Trench Broom with the Godot plugin, or even sites like Draw.io and Figma, but I like to keep this simple and purely in Godot. Before we begin, I recommend taking a look at the Level Design Book website, which I've linked in the description. It's a great resource for learning how to think about cohesive level design, and I'll be using the terminology in that resource from this point on. There are two steps in this process. The first is to create a top-down layout, and the second is to actually block out that level in 3D. Let's move on to the layout creation. First, I'll imagine that my level will have four different distinct zones and two floors that are interconnected. Let's assign a color to each zone and a color for stairs up and stairs down. In Godot, we'll create a mesh library scene containing meshes of just those colors with the appropriate names. A mesh library scene can be created by following this setup of a root node followed by a mesh for each item. If we want these to also have collision built in, we can slap a static body and collision shape child on each one as well. Here's an example of how I create a mesh and color it, but if you still find this part confusing, I encourage you to check out the grid map documentation in the description. Once that is finished, we'll go to scene at the top of the window, export as, mesh library, and save it. Next, we'll create a new 3D scene called level layout and add a grid map node. I'll call this node floor one. We can add our mesh library to our grid map, switch our view to top orthogonal, and get creative. If you're following along, make sure to set your cell size to the size of your mesh library cubes, which is the default one by one by one for me. I'll make a small map for our demonstration. The grid map controls and hotkeys will be on the side. I finished my first floor, so let's add the second floor. We can simply duplicate floor 1, call it floor 2, and delete the previous duplicated floor using shift, click, drag, and the delete key. Make sure to set the floor of the grid map to negative 1. The nice thing about this is how easy it is to treat it like a layer system by toggling their visibility. Now I'll go ahead and make a second floor. I like to start by putting the stairs up directly underneath the stairs down. Looks decent. Now, onto the blocking out section. For this example, I'll make a new mesh library of 2x2x2 two by two by two cubes with the same colors, all of which also have static body children to enable collision for our playtesting. I'll make a new scene for our block out, add a grid map with the block out mesh library, and get to work constructing it following the layout as a template.
Alright, all done. As always, there are many different ways to achieve this. You can make everything in Blender, use just CSG meshes, or even different instance grid map scenes. What's important is that you eventually feel good about your level design, and can playtest and iterate quickly on it, which this approach should achieve. I find this approach especially helpful once you've got to fit even bigger levels into one space. If you found the video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks.